In 1986, the life of a young girl named Delgir Setsek took a dramatic turn when a talent scout noticed the look and shape of her tiny fingers. She was soon after enrolled at the Music College of Mongolia. Little did her family realize this child prodigy would go on to become one of Mongolia's most renowned violinists. Now known internationally simply as Degi, this artist has dazzled fans with her classical talent and unique flair. Degi somehow manages to fuse traditional Mongolian music with a techno twist, delighting music lovers around the world. She's released four best-selling CDs and has performed concerts, not just in Mongolia, but around the world. Degi, welcome to talk with me. My pleasure. Degi, tell us about the Althangadas Medal. Can you tell me about this honor? I see a photo. First of all, I'm really happy to be invited to this show, that which is completely new, completely starting, as far as my understanding is, right? And um, uh, we are good friends, and we, um, I think, hope that can give you a um, good, entertaining show. If it is, if it's as wonderful as your concerts, yeah, you whatever you know, that is, yeah, stay with us. Yes, stay. <laughs> Anyway, um, yeah, thank you very much for asking about this uh, award that I got it. And it was uh, honestly um, such an honor to be awarded, you know, um, after all, really. Um, mm -hmm. I have started my career, Diggy career, mm -hmm. uh, year 2000 mm -hmm. with my first CD, Henty High Mountain. Mm -hmm. And um, ever since, you know, been carrying this name around wherever I go, you know, I always wanted to promote Mongolian classical music mm -hmm. and always wanted to connect it with the Mongolian mm, classical music with the modern music you know mm -hmm. so this is my purpose of my career and uh, um, mm -hmm. with this hard work of my at least 15 years of work you know that um, they have given me this medal and I'm privileged. Yeah. It's in, in honor of your contribution to the Mongolian music industry isn't it? Oh yeah um, you know what I'm still young and there are a lot more to go. Yes. And sometimes these are the uh, medal or award that just, you know, kicks ass. You know? Yes, <laughs> anyway. absolutely. Yeah. I'm just looking at some photos of you at the great uh, State Horal and fabulous family photos. We'll get um, close-ups of these, but you with your son. Where do you keep your medal? Is it at home? Do you wear it out? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this was a beautiful um, Dell. Dell that I just was made for myself, uh, last transfer, mm -hmm. and then I'm glad that I had the proper Dell to uh, receive the medal. Beautiful. But I know the medal sort of culture is only in our two countries, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Russia and Mongolia, but still, you know, anyway, human life is such a short, right? And in that human um, lifetime that you're experiencing, you know, whatever, whichever way that you would feel better and happy, makes you feel special, mm -hmm. you know, that's, as I think, one of the reasons that also, you know, we keep the tradition to give a medal to uh, people who work hard, you know. That's wonderful. I love this Dell. I wanted to wear my Dell today, but it's a bit tight after Nadam, too much Hoshor. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Now, Deggy, I want to go back in time. I know many viewers know a lot about you, but uh, this is specifically geared towards a, an English listening crowd. Can you tell me a little bit about your childhood? I've read that a talent scout noticed the shape and size of your fingers and he thought that you would be suited to yes, playing the violin. How did you feel about this and is it something you were willing to give a try? Yeah, um, as you said, it, this is, uh, this could be or you know, the mostly for English, you know, the crowds. But Subtitled in Mongolian. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> um, it might be interesting for some of you that um, uh, to hear that I grew up actually in a gear, you know. Mm -hmm. I spent my childhood up to the age of 10 mm -hmm. that was in a gear. Mm -hmm. And in that time, it was a socialist time, completely mm -hmm. socialist time, where everyone lived a gear, you know. And I'm really, really, um, now when I see back now that I'm happy that I have experienced, I had a chance to experience uh, all the lifestyle, you know. Mm -hmm. 
different lifestyles, especially gear, like, you know, the Mongolians, you know, that's who we are, actually, you know. And um, imagine that a girl was in the age of seven, okay, mm -hmm. that was the time to go to school mm -hmm. and um, uh, being uh, chosen to go to music school, you know, because I was in the kindergarten. Um, in the socialist time, what would, you know, the parents do is that they just would send their kids to um, kindergarten, school mm -hmm. and then the state itself you know will take care of the child right. they had nothing like as a nanny thing or private schools or private things there had we had no understanding of any of such things yet we all had you know all went to the kindergarten state kindergarten mm -hmm. state school everything mm -hmm. that the state would take care of us mm -hmm. and instead the parents would just work so hard you know day in day out you know yeah. so that's how they were creating the socialist society, you know. And I am one of the fruit. <laughs> and um, I went to that school and I was chosen to, you know, from the kindergarten I was chosen to go to the music college mm -hmm. where I had actually a choice of uh, choosing a piano mm -hmm. or violin instrument, you know. I was qualified for both and um, imagine that leaving a girl in a living in a gear, which is like um, not, not bigger than this, right? Yeah. Um, Putting a piano in a gear was such an um, outrageous or such a, I had no understanding, you know. On top of that, you had to purchase a piano. Mm -hmm. Or if you choose a violin, then um, uh, school issued the, you know, the violin, you know. That's fascinating. So I told my mother and the mother said, do we have to think, you know. <laughs> so it's anyway. It's a no-brainer. I mean, you, you would need another gear if you had to Oh yeah, piano. yeah, you know, it's like. Then, I mean, everything's got a reason and season, mm -hmm. yeah? Um, it's all about, the, I think, karma, you know, that how am I supposed to go, you know, the, what sort of path that you know, is there for me, you know, to take it, you know? So it was, a, uh, when I think back now that, you know, consciously or consciously that I have already connected to this music life, you know, mm. and with this violin instrument, mm -hmm. I think it's a bigger, bigger, you know, such a big blessing. From God, you know? Deki, can you play the piano though? I'm curious. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because in you know, music college, you know, the piano is the second instrument mm -hmm. that everyone is supposed to, you know, mm -hmm. learn piano. And I know you can sing. Ah, oh. uh, in my shower. You've sung a little <laughs> bit on your balcony. <laughs> Deki, um, your mother, however, was a little bit concerned as you were um, studying at the music conservatory. She had ideas of you being a kindergarten teacher. Can you tell us why? She wanted you to think about that as a career. Alison, that's a real life, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not really here to, like, you know, tell all the good things about life. You know, the real life, really, the, the, the real story is always like, you know, hey, you know, and at the time, you know, now maybe it, life, life is different, you know, but at the time, you know, everyone was just really, you know, um, looking for a place, looking for a, you know, profession mm -hmm. to make sure that you're not hungry, you know, yes, after all, you know, that you make sure that your kid's not hungry, you know, mm -hmm. so that food, whatever that is, it's the first issue, right, to be provided. So yes. then, mother said that, um, as long as you uh, learn a violin or be a, you know, the uh, music teacher, mm -hmm. that um, at least you can be a kindergarten teacher, you know, music teacher, so that, you won't, you won't be hungry in a way, you know? uh, uh, There's a, th there will be food all the time. And that's the sort of, of course, the, the real, real life mm -hmm. uh, message. In other words, that of course, she told me a beautiful, she told me about the beautiful melody, which is actually a uh, dear Mongolian classical melody called Hinti High Mountain. Mm -hmm. That's the melody was played by a beautiful woman back in, um, 70s, 80s, you know, mm -hmm. as quite famous woman and quite famous uh, melody, you know, that she would give me the, uh, the idea, you know, right. my daughter, dear daughter, you know, that just um, someday that you play this melody, you know, um, and uh, I would be really proud of you. And that was, those are the kind of messages that I've had mm -hmm. when I started, you know. So deep inside, I mean, you always knew that you could I'm, I was a good girl anyway, you know, I was always uh, practicing, you know, mm -hmm. doing homework. And of course, on top of that, I have to mention all those teachers, all those people mm -hmm. who worked so hard in the state school and kindergarten to, you know, give the education to you know, the, 
people's child, you know. Yeah. Do you still keep in contact with them? Uh, yeah. um, in, music college is a very unique school. Where my, um, you know, where you have a violinist teacher, you know, the pri uh, it's not private, but the um, <coughs> specialized teacher, you know, mm -hmm. for you. And then that person will take care of you right from the first day up to, you know, 12 years of full education, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, that's almost called really my mother, um, musical mother, <laughs> my violin teacher. Two moms, a very lucky, beautiful woman. What's her name? Alta, Alton Stick. Golden Flower. Yeah. Lovely. And she got the, the best award, the teacher award. Uh, that was the photo that was taken right behind the government house. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm so proud of her and she's proud of me too. I bet she, <laughs> she must be, well. Deggy, tell me more um, about the differences between Soviet times and what youth are experiencing today in Mongolia. I mean, I know you talk about maybe lack of food, things were tough. Yeah. What, what was it like? Hmm. I was um, comparatively uh, very, very young, you mm -hmm. know, during those transition. Yet, of course, um, my real childhood stayed at that back the socialist you know, time. Yet, um, uh, all I could re actually now remember is that, um, of course, I always um, support these Democrats. You know, always mm -hmm. them, you know, support this uh, new era. So you were happy when the Russians left. When always really happy that we had such a close connection to Russia mm -hmm. because. Uh, there are lots of lots of positive influence from Russia. You know, all I can really name is classical music. Mm -hmm. You know, classical music in Europe, European culture to Mongolian people. You know, mm -hmm. which is which made maybe even you know, Mongolia even more unique. You know, because we are so-called Asian country, mm -hmm. yet we do have a European culture. So yes, it's yes, those are the two that. things. You know, yeah. yeah. Do you speak Russian? We all inquired to speak. You know, Russia. <clears throat> back at that time, really, but nowadays, uh, not really uh, using Russian language that often. Mm -hmm. But um, I graduated as a English and Russian translator, you mm -hmm. know, from the Technical University mm -hmm. after I graduated from the Music College. And that's one of your two <coughs> Mongolian degrees. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, after I studied in the Music College, you know mm -hmm. that. Um, uh, Teacher, of course, my teachers in the school, you know, they wanted me to continue studying in the University of Arts and Culture here, you know. But um, <clears throat> that was just around the, that transition time that where everyone was so much of um, heading to learn English, you know. Yes. And heading to just where the whole world is being explored to, you know, outside, you know. So your first degree is actually in translation? Yeah, yeah. So then I went to, um, gave up studying on this. <clears throat> University of Arts and Culture. Mm -hmm. Instead, I was started to uh, enroll to the Technical University. You know, mm -hmm. the University of it's it's a second biggest university in Mongolia. Um, that I I decided to study English there, and I've learned English for so many years. Deggy, was this <coughs> after the age of seventeen? You won a, a national competition for violin. You're a medalist. Is this when you realize you have a very unique talent for violin and then you think, no, I'll become a translator? I mean, didn't this medal that you won get uh, you, you know what? Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, that um, we, uh, from my own experience, you know, from age to maybe seven to 16 or at least 15, you know, mm -hmm. that we, we, you know, we do what we are told to do so. So we just do things that, you know, with or without, not much of really, at the time, who would ask, <coughs> hey, Deggy, do you want to do this or not? You know, I had no choice. Right, right. No one actually really asked, you know. But when you actually um, reach about age about 15 or 16, that's where when you sort of realize like, hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I think that's my life, you know, mm -hmm. and I better be good at this, you know, so that I have a future or whatever, you know. And I don't want to be a kindergarten teacher. Oh, whatever, you know. On, and on top of that, I started earning, you know, age of 15, 16 mm -hmm. with my, you know, violin, with my, you know, many, many years of, you know, hard work and practice. Yes, playing in concerts, I know you've... And that encouraged me a lot to, 
you know, go further of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. playing my music so that I can earn some money. And then, of course, Diggy, you play with the National Philharmonic Orchestra, um, classically trained. How many years did you play with the orchestra for? No, 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 I haven't. I, you know what? Uh, there are concerts that I have played with the orchestra, mm -hmm. but I haven't really never been in a part of an orchestra. Right, for a lengthy period of time, just concerts now and then. Yeah, concerts now and there. Um, I, you know what, um, socialist time or our the understanding of classical music is that you all have to wear, you know, white and black. Mm -hmm. White top and black, you know, um, skirt or whatever. The, the skirt got to be long, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, you know. And um, classical music, it has to be very, very rigid and then you have to just follow what is written there. And classical music stage is always very scary, mm -hmm. to, be to tell you the truth, mm -hmm. very scary. And the who person who is going on the stage, you know, and it's always seems like it's like a punishment, you know, not the enjoyment. So that's, that's how I saw it personally. You weren't free. You weren't free. So my whole point was that, hey, you know, at, at the end of the day, <laughs> you want to enjoy what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, I have seen that concept from right from the early age, you know, and you, either you enjoy and do it, do that, otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. you don't have to do this, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, another influence is that um, electric violin concept, oh, yes, you know? yes, that come out violin. like just around after my music college years. So I saw, I've been to Hong Kong like uh, when I was 19 or 18, you know, that I saw four girls playing in the... The electric violin. Electric and violin. And said, I want one of those. Running around, you know, that just made me pee in my pants right away. <laughs> well, I've peed in my pants when I watch you play the electric violin. <laughs> Thank you. Fabulous! I'll never forget the uh, New Year's Eve party. I think it was last year, the year before, and you had your electric violin up on the chairs. I mean, your your performances are so unique and so magical. magical. Yeah, I love them. The Degi, you apply. I mean, after your studies in Mongolia, two degrees, you apply to go to an American university and you win a scholarship. Was this the first time you had been overseas? Uh, you know what, um, my really, really biggest, biggest dream was to study up, you know, overseas, mm -hmm. especially in America, because um, that's like studying in the U.S. was like a mm -hmm. holy, you know, molly, you know, that's like something that you have to do, you have to be able to do while you were like in your 20s, you know, mm -hmm. that was my biggest dream that I really worked for so hard for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are the two schools that I graduated from music college and from technical university were the excellent, you know, stairs to for me to be able to enroll in the states, you know. Right. Yeah. And, and it, was it was a master's, master's degree you did in the states. Um, it was actually a, a music bachelor, BA. Right. Yeah. And you studied under uh, Delana Jensen, who is a very famous violinist. How did she help you and change? I mean, what what did you learn from Delana Jensen? Oh, you know what? Um, she's she's really really famous violinist, you know, and um, I just wrote her uh, e e letter, actually, handwritten letters, you know, so that um, I'm from Mongolia, you know, that I have da -da 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 this background and then I have a dream to, you know, I just, I, I just gave it to go, really. So this is how you applied for the scholarship, you hand wrote a letter to this. Yeah, and I had uh, audition, you know, I had um, audition, my, you know, myself. I went, I've been to U.S. first and then I auditioned, you know, and played a Mendelssohn concerto. And um, after that, you know, I had received a scholarship where I had, you know, I can choose the professors from the university where mm -hmm. I said, you know, that's my background. And most importantly, it was very important that I have had those repertoires mm -hmm. that have been played, you know. Mm -hmm. So it must have been interesting for her to work with someone from the very, very different culture. You know, she said that, you know, <clears throat> when I heard, uh, when I read um, your letter, you know, that you're from Mongolia, it looked to me like you're from Moon, you know, like you know, the Mongolia is like such a, f the country that is like yeah, yeah, yeah. way, 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 you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, but um, it was interesting, really, a um, couple of years to study with. And for me, like, you know, with the, be with the background that I had, mm -hmm. music college, I mean, it wasn't as really challenging studying in the U.S. Mm -hmm. professionally, right. you know. But of course, 
as a person, you know, as, um, as a young girl, you know, it was a whole different environment, whole different culture. And uh, it was um, tough. And um, just to get the A grade, of course, you know, how you have to know the subject inside out mm -hmm. so that you get A, right? right? But here in Mongolian education system or in the, even in the university that, you know, you had to be um, good friends with the professor so mm -hmm. that you can get A. Did you have an American boyfriend? No. Didn't have time. Did you miss your family? Of course, yeah. Um, you know what, people say that, you know, going to the States and then studying in the big cities, like, you know, you, that studying and being in a big city is like such a big challenge, you know. Mm. Rather keep yourself in a, somewhere real calm and then just concentrate on the studying. This is, of course, at the University of Michigan. Yeah, uh, the, the, in Michigan in and Michigan. the Grand Valley State University. Mm -hmm. Listen, I know you recently brought Delana Jensen over here to UB to play Tchaikovsky with yeah. you. Amazing concert. Was it hard to bring her over here? Uh, I have contacted her after seven years of not being contacted, really, you know, after my uh, school years. And um, that was really also my, one of my dreams mm -hmm. to bring her, you know, mm -hmm. Mongolia and have a concert together and show her Mongolian country. Because she is the one that she uh, asked, you know, that, hey, Deggy, um, when you land in UB, you know, then your parents be, you know, the, you know waiting for you there with their horse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's very difficult for foreign, foreigners to fathom what life oh, yeah, is yeah. like back here. It's like, I just cannot imagine. Because all the information that is showing, shown, you know, around the world mm -hmm. about Mongolia is they just show the countryside life, which mm -hmm. is exactly the same as 500 years ago life. Deggy, tell me, moving on to your musical influences, who motivated you when you were young? Who did you aspire to be like as a musician? Did you have any idols or um, I know, people who you looked up to, teachers, musicians within Mongolia? I wasn't actually really really looking. I, mean, I, I w you know, it would be bad to say that I didn't have an idol. Like, I don't know, like if, but I, there's, all I had to just um, realize and remind myself is that you have to be good, no, you're not other choice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what about internationally? Do you have any international uh, artists that you really admire, who you would love to perform with one oh, day? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the person I would, could name is Yoyama. Oh, Yoyama. Yeah, the cellist, you know. Amazing. Uh, he's, he's, I think, you know, there's, Oh, the taste of music is mm. such a beautiful thing that I think he tastes it quite well, you know. Amazing. You met your, your mama? Not yet, but I uh, have sent my CDs and you know, photos through my uh, f uh, famous um, long song singer, Hongor mm -hmm. you know. She is the one that, you know, that worked with, her, uh, with him closely, mm -hmm. so I have sent my CDs to him. But yeah, you know, if you say that, you know, uh, why not that someday just We'll play together and yes, I think I think we need to get Yo-Yo Ma to UB. <laughs> Try and organize this. Particularly your last two CDs, you fuse uh, traditional Mongolian melodies, but you make it sexy and exciting and you have a techno rhythm in the background. It's very exciting. It's very new for Mongolia. How did you develop this style and how did you develop this amazing stage confidence and the the performer within you how did this how did this deggy come about <laughs> uh, it's all about music that i'm playing mm -hmm. you know whichever music whatever style of music that i'd like to deliver it mm -hmm. i would like to del deliver it properly you know mm -hmm. so it doesn't really do like separate things you know that i just um work on the presentation part you know it just comes out like it's the one goal you know mm -hmm. like if that music is something that has got, uh, you know, speed in it, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, the charm in it, you know, mm -hmm. so that you have to also be charming as well, yes. you know, to deliver the music. Yeah. And you appeal to such a, so many generations. I mean, the younger generation with this, the techno, funky rhythm, I mean, it's very, I don't know, it, it's something you could listen to in a nightclub, at a concert. It's uh, so unique. Do you prefer that to classical music what do you prefer to play are you hey everything is about the balance right mm -hmm. you have to have the 
good skill. That's where the classical music gives you the good skill, the good bass, right? Mm -hmm. But um, it's all your freedom. It's all up to you. How to translate it into mm -hmm. whichever music that you'd like to mm -hmm. give it to. My whole point of uh, stage presence is that once I'm on the stage, mm -hmm. I would like to touch the people and I'd like yes. to massage their heart. Yes, and you do. I love this. We'll, we'll get close-ups of this. I mean, yeah, I've seen you perform so many times and you just... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. You get people energized. At the end of the day, we are entertainers, right? Mm -hmm. So we are supposed to do our job, mm -hmm. which Did is entertain. Are there any times you think, oh, I don't want to do this today. I, I'm tired. Get rid of the violin. Do you, do you ever feel... Of course, you know, we're all human, you know. Mm -hmm. that some days are down, some days are, you know, they're, um, anything can happen, right? Mm -hmm. Any day, so. But if there are performance there, if there's a concert there that have to be smiling on stage and have mm -hmm. to do that and just do it. And anyway, you know, I have performed when I was really, really sick. Really? You know, and that experience was like, it's almost like getting out of the, um, Hangover, you know, mm -hmm, <laughs> that, mm -hmm. you know, w just before this performance, you know, that you just feel, oh, it's just having chilly fever and then it's just completely like weak, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, but you just push yourself on the stage and then once you're on the stage, then you forget about that thing, you know, but bring out your uh, dragon inside, you know, mm -hmm. and just makes you feel completely sweaty and completely like just, you know, just. Yeah. So you forget oh. about yourself in a way and you become. Yeah, I have had that experience a couple of times, and after that, you know, um, after the stage, actually, it just feels so good. Yeah. One of the things I, I wanted to touch on as well is you uh, perform and you do everything without a manager. In Mongolia, the situation is very different from uh, artists overseas. How is it not having a manager, and wh why is the situation unique in Mongolia? Oh, uh, you know what? Um, just after the transition, uh, we were just talking about the transition era, right? And now what? You know, the society is just, uh, just experiencing every single day, every single new day, you know, every day. Um, same thing with the music industry, you know, that just now that we're having a um, particular professional, it's called, you know, manager, you know, the art manager, you know. When my career started, there's no such thing as a manager thing, you know. You just do everything yourself, you know. and. It's amazing, actually, that um, when I was uh, year, about year 2000, you know, it was okay, like, you know, that just doing by itself, you know, one by one, but then mm -hmm. had my first ever concert, the solo concert, it's a huge concert, you know, 2006. Mm -hmm. um, that's where when I had done it, and then this, this, I had so much good kick out of it, you know, so that... You organized this yourself? Yep. And second year, I mean, my 2007, I organized even bigger crowd, even bigger, you know, the sets, the two sets, whole sets of concerts and comes out of the, one is total, the, uh, the classical, you know, music, mm -hmm. classical orchestra, classical singers. That was my first, you know, the part of the concert. Second part of the concert, I wanted to make it into Mongolian traditional uniqueness and mm -hmm. then just whole pile of dancers, whole pile of artists, and then the traditional musical instrument orchestra that I had to organize. and. That year thought, you know, 2007 concert afterwards, I collapsed, you know, right. like... Because you were on your I own just, PR yeah, manager, yeah. everything. And uh, at times that I had to think about, like, whether am I going to be showing how good violinist am I, or how <laughs> good organizer am I, you know, to audience, you know. The, yes, it was so a bit... Uh, you have to be multi-skilled. And recently, I mean, now, you've started a new venture. You've started a school, Deggy's Music School. I mean... You just, you keep going. I mean, does this, tell me about your new music school okay. and doesn't this exhaust you along with the concerts and the recording? How is it that a busy woman like you can also start her own music school? Mm, it is uh, awesome. You know, the, there's so many things that you, the young woman can wish in life. Right? And motherhood. And motherhood. Um, and yes, one of the, my longest um, lifelong dream is to, have my academy or school, you know, the music school. And mm -hmm. through this, I have also studied, while we were, I was studying in the States, mm -hmm. I um, went to the Suzuki camp, 
to study the teacher training course, you know. I didn't know so, this. Yeah. So I become a, you know, the certified Suzuki <coughs> teacher training, you know, in Suzuki method, you know, which is a special great method that whole U.S., whole world is following, you know. And I was the person that uh, heard about this theory mm -hmm. and studied there, which means like, hmm, it's something completely new here mm -hmm. in Mongolia, you know. And I had, again, I got a scholarship on that. <laughs> and had, by having a scholarship, I said, my dream to bring Suzuki Meru to Mongolia, you know, mm -hmm. so which I am, I'm doing it after how many years, yeah. And do you teach violin? Do you teach classical piano and, and voice, or is it mostly violin? Oh, the, my school, you know, the, the most common instrument is, of course, piano, mm -hmm. right? So then we do have a piano and violin, the violin I'm teaching myself. And Murahur um, we have, you know. That, yeah. Can you play the modern horn? Uh, not really well, but I can, yeah. yeah. Because as a Mongolian, you know, this should be a um, thing that we play Murahur. Yeah? It should be mandatory. Mandatory. In America, when I was growing up, I mean, we all were required to play the recorder. I wish someone had given me a modern whore. I think I would have loved that a lot more. Deggy, do you, is, is talent within all of us? I mean, do you ever come across a pupil who you just think, oh, no, this kid has not got the ear? Or do you think it's something that you really can develop? Uh... I realize that, you know, it is much harder to work with someone else mm -hmm. rather, than, rather than working with yourself, right? Because I do know myself, you know, and I know when to kick, when to love myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but having to work with, especially a kid, you know, especially having, the, oh, it's a quiet challenge. And it requires a lot more time yeah. and gives me a lot less money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's a, I would say, duty, you know, that um, having to, having been in this big path of art, you know, mm -hmm. that I have to now prepare a good audience, you know, that's also part of my job. Yeah. And it's, it's quite enjoyable, really, <coughs> the kid is kid, you know, that... Well, how old is the youngest pupil? Uh, start from age of four. Taking moving on a little bit to, to your family life, I know you're married to an Aussie. Yeah. Uh, does he share your passion, passion for music? Um, this is why we're married. <laughs> yeah, <coughs> of course, you know. Um, <coughs> got married uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, um, first of all, um, I'm happy to, I was happy to meet the person who completely were fall in love with the country, my country. Yes, you, you mean your Mongolia. husband now has fallen in love with Mongolia? No, no, no. It, he, he, before me even, uh -huh. you know, that he fell in love with the country. Yes. So that was uh, like, I think, uh, the first ever uh, mm -hmm. impression, that mm -hmm. the positive impression to me was really, you know. It is hard to get married to someone, mm -hmm. you know, that if the other person do not like the country, that where I was born, you know, right? it will be a uh, conflict, right? <laughs> but we didn't have such thing. On top of that, um, uh, not only a country that he always uh, supported the children, especially the orphanage, mm -hmm. you know, that. Um, those are the things that really made my heart realize mm -hmm. that, you know, as a local person that you know, we actually never really talk, think and worry about the orphanage here, you know. Mm -hmm. What's the name of the orphanage that uh, your husband supports? Um, that's Lotus Center. Lotus, you know? yes. Yeah, Lotus Center for Didi, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we all become a big uh, good friends of, you know, uh, friends and after all. And she's too. Oh, yeah. Deggy, how did you spend Natum? What did you do <coughs> over the summer? Um, Natum time is uh, only almost a time to uh, th think and positively or just uh, be proud of, mm -hmm. you know, my country. Did you have lots of adag? Um, yes, and uh, my Natum, the high, high point of Natum is actually, of course, to go to the stadium, you know, to see the opening. Yes, and oh, to experience I love it. the opening scene. And um, that's my, uh, I mean, when you, are there, then that's where you think that, hmm, this really proud of this mm -hmm. 
It's magical. The magical. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us. But I, I want to give you this before you go. Uh, it's something I picked up at a little bookshop in UB. They're very hard to come across. Mongolian proverbs yeah. translated into English. Now, it's quite interesting. It's interesting. I mean, it's, look at how big it is. There are so many proverbs, and they rate them by frequency used. Um, and it, I, I find some of them quite entertaining. I want to know from you, what's your favorite Mongolian proverb, and if you can please translate it into English. Yeah, um, we say that it's a chill, it's a chin. I'll definitely need a translation. It's a chill, it's a chin, you know. I think uh, it's just that uh, if you'd really, uh, yeah, God helps you for those who worked hard or for those who you know, help themselves, right? Mm -hmm. That's a sort of a meaning, like you know. So it, I always believed in that, you know, that mm -hmm. um, at least you have to do your 50%. Mm -hmm. to reach the, the point where the God is coming from the other side mm -hmm. to help you, right? And if you're not going there to yourself, you know, then h how is he going to help you out, you know? So. Diga, I think you do 100% though. Listen, is there, uh, I'd love to get you to play a little song for us. Would you mind, um, we'll get the violin on stage and uh, I'd like to have a little try if that's okay. I want you to tell me if I have what it takes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this a... A Stradivarius? Mm, no. Because if it is, I'm not playing it. Okay. This is, try and guess what I'm playing and tell me if I have potential. Okay, ready? This is Beethoven's fifth. <laughs> have I got it? <laughs> have I got it? <laughs> I, think, I think you better cook because I'm hungry. Now. <laughs> okay, time to make hosher. <laughs> That's it. Diggy, thank you. Okay. Thank you.
Okay, well, thank you very much for being on Talk With Me today. Hope to see you next week, but for now, Deggy, thank you very much. Hope to see you. It's all a pleasure, really. I hope you're good. <coughs> you know what, show goes all uh, really, really successful that I wish you to be a Mongolian opera, huh? Opera? Yeah. I could try it. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could coach yeah. me. Of course. Okay. Mongolia, that old for now. We'll see you next week.